On a recent Wednesday Word of the Week, we looked at the word for inheritors. And we saw that in Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. And one of the things that I mentioned was a particular Greek grammatical construction that, re that used uh, correlative conjunctions to show the connection between two things or a contrast between them or to offset them, that sort of a situation. And that construction uses a men and a day, so there'll be two different clauses, one introduced with a men on the one hand and the other with a day on the other hand. And that correlation between the two things is what the structure does for us. It's usually not translated into our English versions um, because we find smoother ways to say these things in English. Um, so uh, in that passage in Romans, it said that if we are children, then we're also heirs. On the one hand, heirs of God, but on the other hand, joint heirs or co-heirs together with Christ. So the correlation is two different heirs in two different ways. <clears throat> heirs because we're children of God and also heirs together with Christ because we partake in his suffering. So you see how the, the men at day, the, on the one hand, on the other hand, um, is used to correlate two ideas. Today we're going to look at a couple examples of that. The first one is from Jesus himself, and it's in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. The ESV says it this way. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So let's look at the key statement here in Koine. Uh, homentherismos paulus. So, Men, on the one hand, the therismos, the harvest, is plentiful, paulus. Uh, hoide ergas, uh, ergatai oligoi. So the day tells us now, here's the other side of the equation, but on the other hand, the workers are few. So on the one hand, the harvest is plentiful, but on the other hand, the workers is few. Uh, the workers are few, pardon me. Um, so what's the correlation? The correlation is harvest to workers. There's a plentiful harvest, but few workers. Um, we could reverse it if, you know, if the circumstances were different, it wouldn't change anything. If the harvest was uh, limited, but the workers were plentiful, we could still say, on the one hand, the harvest is limited, or on the one hand, the, the workers are plentiful, but on the other hand, there's not much to harvest etc. So it's not, it doesn't control the nature of the correlation. It simply points out that there is a correlation between two things and the context is going to tell us what the correlation is. <clears throat> the other thing it does is it sets up the next part because if you think back or you can go and read it yourself in Matthew 9, 38, uh, what does Jesus say next? Uh, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send more workers. Why? Because we've got a problem. On the one hand, there's a plentiful harvest. On the other hand, there are few workers. What do we need? We need more workers. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send more workers. Let's take a look at another one in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Again from the ESV. <clears throat> do you not know that in a race all the runners run? but only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Let's take a look at the, the uh, key part in Koine. Uk oidete hoti. Do you not know that? And then here comes the key. Hoi uh, men stadio trecontes pantes. All the ones running in, in the stadium in a race, uh, on the one hand, men, uh, trekusin, they run. On the one hand, all the ones who run, run. Uh, then we get to the second part. Heis de lambane to brabeon. So we get the day again. So, But on the other hand, one receives the prize. So don't you know that in a, in a foot race, in a running race, uh, everyone who runs in a running race, on the one hand, they all run. But on the other hand, there's only one winner. So what's the correlation? The correlation is runners to winners. 
Everyone in the race runs, only one wins the prize. What does it set Paul up to tell us to do? He says, so then run like you want to win. Uh, it's, it's not enough to just run. It, there's only going to be one who gets the prize. Run like you want to win the prize. Uh, great use of it to give us the correlation. Men, on the one hand, many runners, day, but on the other hand, only one winner. So run like you want to win. Let's look at one more from Peter. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Once again, uh, the ESV, I'm going to actually read verses 20 and 21 so you see the outcome as well. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. So the men in the day are in verse 20. Uh, pros nomenoi, pros nomenu men, pro kataboles cosmu. So pros nomenu, we get our, um, this is a paris, uh, participle form of the word we get prognosis from, foreknowledge. When the doctor gives you a prognosis, he's uh, trying to look into the future with the knowledge that he or she possesses to tell you what you can expect in this illness. That's your prognosis. So uh, prognos menu, uh, he was foreknown on the one hand, pro cataboles cosmu, before the foundation of the world. Then we get the second part, phonerothentos uh, <coughs> de ep escatu ton chronu di huma. So, but he was revealed on the other hand, but on the other hand, he was revealed in this last time on your account. So what's the correlation? It's knowledge of Christ. It's, he was known before the foundation of the world on the one hand, but on the other hand, he was known by you. He appeared here in the world. He was manifest here in the world in the last times for your sake. For your sake in what regard? So that your faith and hope are in God, he tells us in verse 21. So we see the correlation, we see the men in the day play out, but why does this matter um, for handlers of the New Testament? Well, as you can see, if you translate this correlation, if you take the men in the day and you flesh it out fully, on the one hand, the harvest is plentiful, but on the other hand, the workers are few or the laborers are few, it can make the translation kind of bloated and clunky. That's why, generally speaking, you don't see it um, fleshed out that fully in the English translations. But I think we're missing out on something important. The writer, the redactor, or the speaker, depending on how you want to look at it, um, took the time and the trouble to employ this construction. The correlative conjunctions were used in the original text for a reason. What's the reason? Because the correlation is being established. It's, being an, uh, it's an unmistakable tool to say these two things are related. The number of runners in a race and the number of winners in a, in a race are correlated and you should be thinking about them as part of a whole so that you understand the message of, therefore, if you're going to run, run like you want to win because there's only going to be one winner. No participation trophies in stadio, in the stadium. Uh, so it mattered to the writer, it mattered to the speaker, it should matter to the reader. Um, it's going to help inform what we do with it. We're going to use that construction in our exegesis, in, in our interpretation, in the hermeneutics of taking what the text says and applying it to the future. So why should we care? Well, because on the one hand, um, we want to use this tool in our interpretation of the text but on the other hand, we need to take that same tool and use it for the application of what we learned from there. So I hope that was useful for you. It's a, a, it was a pleasure for me because those little subtleties, those little intricacies 
uh, on the one hand, give us a glimpse into the history of how the language was used, and on the other hand, bring it alive for us in the present day. Thanks for joining me today, and until we see each other again, Kars Kairani Humin, grace and peace to you.